Welcome to Spartan Up Podcast. Here we are at Brooklyn Boulder. Uh, this is a really cool one. This is a two-part one. And, you know, a real neat uh, contrast. We've got Nelson Diaz, the second one. Nelson is a really dynamic, high-energy guy who has devoted himself to helping other people. He takes his own physicality and helps other people. It's amazing. He tells them great stories. One of the guys that he works with is... Um, Blind Pete, Pete. Blind Pete. Pete Casaboon. Such a nice guy. And so Pete, it's really cool. This one, at the very start, I thought I had to lean in because... Because you know, Pete's a slow talking guy, kind of quiet. But by the end, man, there were some huge, huge lessons to this one. So, so really lean into this one. Uh, it's two parts uh, Pete, and then we're going to go to Nelson. But first, we're going to talk about, not talk, but we're going to introduce Joe. I'm Joe. Johnny. Johnny. Sephra. Sephra Tim. Tim, Tim and I. And Marion. Here we go. All right, we are here um, in Vermont for Spartan Up Podcast with Pete, uh, uh, who's uh, 100% blind? Yes. 100% blind, but comes out and does these events um, with a navigator. What, what would you term uh, the person that helps you? Guide. With a guide. I uh, apologize for that. Um, and what we talk about typically on this podcast is how to become successful. Okay. Whether, whether you're a mom, whether you're a monk, whether um, you're an adaptive athlete, how do you push through and get ahead in life? There's a lot of people, we touch a million people a year that could come out to our events around the globe that just can't find the motivation. Why aren't we touching 10 million? Why don't we have 100 million? Like, what is it that gets you to do it and you have a tougher time than everybody else? The simplest answer is uh, I don't want to be left out of the fun. Right. Races, events like this are... They're challenging, but they're also something that I don't have a whole lot of opportunity or didn't before I learned about them. Now that I know about them, I want to do as many as possible, you know, test myself, you know, be also a part of, you know, what's going on rather than just being on the sidelines. Why don't you walk uh, the listeners through that whole experience of um, hiking the last, you know, 25 miles uh, carrying a canoe? Being somewhere where I have no idea of what's in front of me, not even an inch, you know, sent, you know, feeling things with my feet, uh, holding on to, you know, at times holding on to my guide's arm and just moving forward with his instructions and just taking in as much as I can, listening to everybody around me um, while not being able to see anything but, you know, a black and, you know, part black, part gray veil right in front of me. And, you know, it's interesting. It can be a little scary if you're not used to it, but any new situation is. But once you get used to it, you just fall into a pattern of picking up what you need and processing it and, you know, moving on the best you can. I mean, you know, you're contributing as well. You know, not being able to see. Uh, you know, I try to, you know, I try to take care of my guide as much as uh, you know, I know my guide's taking care of me because if my guide drops, I'm stuck. You know, smelling, you know, hearing, touching things, you know, all of that just, it's, it's different. And, you know, it, it does make you appreciate things more. Sure. Um, in, you know, just moving along up a mountain, yeah, and not everybody is going to want to do it, but uh, I think it's an experience everybody should have at least once in their life, you know, even if it's not blindfolded. If it's blindfolded, even better. Uh, you know, there's more. There's more that you can experience than just from seeing it. Were you always blind? No, I was born partially sighted, and it was a gradual uh, deterioration. Deterioration. So, um, what what did you do prior to finding these events? What, what did you have a sport? Actually, uh, my freshman year, the first semester of high school, I ran into a flagpole during a running exercise, and the school system decided to restrict me from taking gym for the rest of my high school career. <laughs> wow. How'd you handle that? Uh, at the time, I just went with what um, you know, went with whatever what the adults decided to do. Right. So, you know, as I got older, I stopped listening to people and decided I want to have more fun and experience life. So, when did you? How many years ago did you dive into all this? Uh, just over four years ago. You found, how'd you find it? You, you um, somebody tell you about it? A friend of mine I was visiting met somebody there who told me about a race that he had just come from, and he saw that I was interested, and when I told him that, he said, I don't think you're going to do so good. You can't see. Um, I just thought, no, you're not going to keep the fun from me. 
the nice. next year, I was at a race. Not easy though. No, it's not easy. But life isn't life. Uh, I'm sorry. Life was never meant to be easy. Does any does anything scare you? Not at this point. Not with races. Not with you know in general you know things that I would experience in life. Unfortunately, I've just thrown myself out there. Walk walked around in a city in day or night, major city, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, gone on. Tr I tried my very first race on my own. I ended up with four guides, but. You know, I decided I had a little sight at the time. Um, other than that, you know, just, you know, even sometimes not knowing who my guide's going to be until I get at the race. Somebody who's never done that before, you know, it gives me a chance to teach them as well as, you know, me to learn something from them as well. So, uh, you know, fear, not as much, just, you know, adapting to the situation, learning from it. One of the big questions we've been uh, toying with here uh, at Spartan is um, this question of who are you? Who am I? And, um, and the answer to that, no matter what it is, uh, you'll be right, right? Because if you're not necessarily the most responsible parent or you're not necessarily the most uh, excited person, if you answer the question that way, that's who you'll be. And that's not maybe the person you want to be. I just want to be part of life, you know, as well as contribute to it rather than you know, being seen as a dead weight, a burden, you know, and in order to you know, you know, be that or be the person I want to be, it means I have to get out there. I have to be able to you know, want to do things and you know, no matter time, how many times I fail, I mean, at least I'm making the attempt. You know, I've got a set goal and I want to reach that. So. Yeah, getting to the starting line is, uh, is probably the hardest thing, right? Oh, uh, starting is the hardest thing ever. But once you're there, you know, things do, they may be hard, but it, get easy, it gets easier from there because eventually you reach the finish line, you reach the goal, and then you move on from there. The goal itself is not even the big thing, right? No, it's, no. it's from beginning... It's the journey. It's the journey. I mean, people say that and we read it. Absolutely, the journey from... Uh, what was it, Friday morning till Sunday? I mean, all of that, just the experience and the memories from that are going to continue for me. And it was the experience, not just finishing at the end. I'm going to miss being here. Yeah. No, you treat it as a privilege. You, what most people are, are, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Mm -hmm. What most people are saying is, is just a horrible experience while it's happening. You're saying, wait a minute, this is a privilege. <laughs> Yeah, I'm oh. getting, I'm getting to do this. I'm getting mm -hmm. to experience life. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm complaining, you know, here and there <laughs> along the way. Yeah, I mean, I don't like hills, but you know, I, I can't do anything but go up the hill. You're a true inspiration. What advice would you give uh, to those out there listening? Just don't sit down. Just get out. You know, experience life. There's always something to find. Well, you're the man. Um, <laughs> Shake my hand. Oh, absolutely. There we go. Good job. Um, get back out there and let's see you get this done. All right, thank you. All right. I got to guide you over this uh, post and around this. Um, get ready. Mm -hmm. Take a step over. Oh, there it is. Johnny, you, you nailed that. You know, you said he, Pete was kind of quiet, but yeah. being quiet doesn't mean that he didn't have anything to say. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, when you, you listen to him, uh, I mean, to, to me, he spoke right to me. I mean, when he said, I don't want to miss out on the fun. I don't yeah. want to be on the sidelines, you know. Yeah. I just want to be, I want to be a contributor. Yeah. I don't want to just be a consumer, you yeah. know. I don't want, basically a guy saying, hey, don't forget me. I'm standing here. I still have merit. I still have worth. I still have energy. And I want to be, I want to be part of something. And I want, to, I want to be here with everybody else. And he talked about how for too long he didn't even really realize that he could take part. He, right. I, I love the story when he said in gym class, he loved gym class, ran into a pole, and they said, yeah. no more gym class for you because of liability. Right. And so you do what the adults tell you. He was inactive for years. And then finally, a friend told him about this race, and he's like, I'm not going to miss any more of this fun. I'm going to get out there. I thought that was really, really cool that he was able to re-engage and is now out there, you know, yeah, being well, awesome. And, it, you know, I can't even imagine being blind and showing up for the race and, and being tied to somebody in a Caterpillar-type race. I, I, but to show up and not even know who your guide is. That was a different and just. But I'm going to suggest the caterpillars. <laughs> I'm going to well, I mean, but I'm going to suggest system. That, I'm going to suggest that you can imagine <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm going to suggest you can imagine it because he invited all of us to go <laughs> climb up a mountain well, blindfolded. There well, you go. The yeah, things, well, I'm throwing down the gauntlet, Colonel. And I. <laughs> oh, well, very nice. no, I mean, well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> something that we've done um, yeah. 
I've, I've gotten to have the privilege of studying with Tom Brown Jr., one of the best survival experts in the country, and one of the great awareness techniques that they give to you is that um, they use the blindfold a lot, actually, because as we all know, when you take away one of your senses, a lot of your other ones get heightened. And so what we've gotten to do, and what a really fun exercise is to do, is you take a rope and you weave it through a wetland around trees in a really cool um, pattern shape line, and you blindfold everyone, and then they follow, they follow along on that rope. And actually, like the disorientation and the fear, you don't know where the limbs are in the trees um, is really a beautiful a beautiful awareness training tool and also uh, just how to interact with your landscape more readily. And I'm going to try and follow that rope right into the to, second part. Aha, uh-huh, very so go good, find Johnny. Nelson Diaz. I just want to say one more thing sure. on, on Blind Pete. I think it's a wake-up call for all of us that do have our senses that we should not waste them and sit yeah. and be yeah. left behind and not dive into life. Yeah, yeah. Right? Joyful and grateful. He's doing it and yeah. so we owe it to ourselves and everybody around us and people like him to to really take part in everything that's available to us. 100%. And then here's Nelson Diaz, right, who actually works with a lot of different adaptive athletes, and he kind of helps to be that bridgestone for Pete wanting to have fun and then being able to work with athletes such as Pete and Tim and all these other people that we'll talk about in an interview. And uh, he just has such a spectacular attitude and outlook on life and really has dedicated himself to pushing himself and um, helping others to do the same. So let's see what he's got to say. We're rolling. We are here for Spartan Up Podcast with Nelson Diaz, and um, we're in Vermont, and he's in the middle of an Agogi 60 hour, so I wanted to pull him out for 15 minutes and um, while his head is a mess, and just talk about what it takes to become successful. What's interesting about him from, from my perspective is um, I always see him out on the courses, out on the Spartan courses, uh, helping adaptive athletes, and you know, it's one thing to do that to get um, maybe famous for yourself or get some pats on the back, but he doesn't seem to do it for that. And he's uh, completely inspiring, so let's just talk about it. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it all started for me. Um, we uh, started up just raising money for uh, paralyzed Rutgers football player Eric Legrand and his mom. Yeah. And then we got a call from Tim Morris uh, from New Hampshire. His buddy and him seemed to think that he could be great at doing obstacle races and he's paralyzed, and I have no idea what the heck to do with that. Uh, met Tim, turns out he's a beast in real life, and his story is huge, uh, very inspiring, and we gave it a go. Um, we did a couple of other events uh, that were fun, and then we heard about Spartan Race, and we figured, well, Let's go what's it. the difference? So we picked the most challenging Spartan Race, Killington, uh, got our butts handed to us uh, somewhere between four and six miles in. We were completely broken, demoralized, leadership decisions gone bad, manpower bad, uh, one of our guys dislocated shoulder and we're coming down a mountain and then we see you and you say to Tim, of course, um, you remember what you said to Tim? I think I said to Tim, uh, you might as well quit or something like and that. Close enough. You said, so you couldn't finish, huh? <laughs> and we, we all hated you at the same time. Right. We all hated you. We kept it under our breath. We were like, this is never going to happen again. You know, yeah. uh, then we realized that what you were really saying, what we believe you were really saying is you came out here to get level playing field, a shot to do what you said you were out here to do. Right. No courtesies, no favor, same butt whooping everyone else is getting. What are you going to do right. after yeah, yeah, today? What's your response? Exactly. Uh, exactly and what, um, right. we uh, said. What's your next move? Exactly. And the next move was to make sure that you're never right again <laughs> in this area. <laughs> and uh, to date, uh, with Tim, he's the first paralyzed athlete to uh, get a double trifecta. Wow. And uh, he's uh, helped me because uh, one of the things that keeps me, and I know you, you want to ask about me and I'll share about it. For me, uh, compassion and action is my key. That, w- without that, I got nothing. I mean, uh, I've been a very selfish individual for so many years, and successful in life, as we all can be, being selfish and looking out for yourself, even though you have your, your family and all that stuff, but you, deep down inside, it's what, what, what gets you moving forward. And uh, it, it took a number of things in my life, and helping adaptive athletes is one of them, to go beyond the moment beyond myself hard to do i mean not just hard to do physically hard to do mentally because one of the things that gets you through some of these events is um your own ego and i you got to put that aside for what you do absolutely right uh the main thing is is safety here you have a guy and in tim specifically barely knew him we knew he's stronger than all of us and he can't move from the, from the chest down sure and he trusts us with his life and he's still rehabbing for the hope that one day that we share with him that him walking again is a true possibility. Right. So we drop him in a mountain at Killington. He, I'm piggybacking him, uh, one of the ways we navigate our, our athletes through challenging terrain. And uh, I, I look and there's this 
branch sticking up out of the ground and immediately panic. What's happened to him? What is he sitting on that I don't know about? And of course he says, pick me up, let's go. (laughs) Okay, it didn't phase him. Let's keep it moving. But the fact that these athletes uh, and friends trust us with you know, safety. you know, I, I, uh, you guys talked me into doing a, a wheelchair race, and so uh, a Spartan race in a wheelchair, yeah. and, and you duct taped me in and, and wanted to give me the full treatment. And um, I got to say, I, I was a little worried, right? Because you're going through water, you're going through mud, and I'm completely immobile. Right. So I'm really dependent on how you guys are operating. Yeah. So I, I get it. You, you, as the athlete in the chair or, or whatever situation you're in, you really are dependent on the crew. Yeah. It, the pride check is in us who want to conquer things and be bigger than we are in front of others. Yeah. But there's a challenge going on to the guy in the chair yeah. uh, or the female in the chair, the athlete in the chair, because what they have to realize, and some of them don't until they're in a race, I'll be honest with you. But one thing they have to realize and remind, remind themselves of is without the team, they're, they're essentially home watching TV right. or doing something else that they can do on their own. Sure. Uh, they have to pride check themselves. And it, and it happens all the time. And then we get caught up in our moments where it's like, oh, we should be pushing harder. But at what risk? Sure. You know, we got a time hack. We can't, you know, we can't let this clock beat us. At what risk? You know, so it's always, a, everyone's being checked. Not, not only that, let's talk about his ego. Let's talk about the athlete's ego. Mine, I felt, I felt terrible. Like, these guys are doing all the work. I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting in the chair, right? And that's a hard thing. Yeah. That's a pretty vulnerable situation to be in. Hard to do, right? Talk about ego. Yeah, well, the amazing thing is with Tim, we almost always have to convince him to, to cut it out. To, uh, you've done enough, now it's our turn. Uh, right. Simply because, you know, we, we do have to consider the elements. He, he can't regulate his core body temperature. So if the sun goes down, if we're too wet, if the situation is just not appropriate, then the team has to, you know, make an emergency decision. So with Tim, the minute he's cold, he's wheelbarrowing. The minute there's open space, he's wheelbarrowing. He's the only human that's wheelbarrowing at three or four you know, 5K Spartan race, 5K is the only human. On his, uh, I'm sorry. On, on his hands. On his hands while yeah. we're supporting his hips yeah. and knees. Yeah. I take that back. Uh, now Lindsay from Connecticut, our second uh, paralyzed athlete, now she, she trained herself up and she's wheelbarrowing. She wheel, wheelbarrow, I think, uh, City Field. Is, uh, so is she, Tim feeling a little uh, competition? Not at all. Uh, yeah. Tim's excited. So um, you inspire me because uh, you always seem to have a positive attitude. We get you out here doing these 60 hour events and. Um, you're broken mentally and physically like everybody else, but somehow you're smiling and still pushing through. Where, where does that come from? Where do you get that inspiration? Where do you get that motivation? I know that there's more to life than this. Yeah. Um, th- this is fun. Yeah. Uh, the hardships outside of an event, outside of a day, outside of a moment in time, that's the real work. You know, yeah. uh, going back and having a look at my children in the face daily and remind myself of who I'm supposed to be to make sure I don't lose touch with that because I'm, I've done that in the past. I, I, in my efforts to do good for others, I've neglected, uh, abandoned the most important people in, in, in my life, you know? Right. And uh, so uh, being able to remember my place, you know, uh, and finding my place and reminding myself of my place and having a group, around, a group of people around me help keep me in check and, and especially nowadays, focused, you know, right. uh, in the home, you know, whereas in the past it was a, hey, come follow me as we go help others and conquer the world and kind of left them to fend for themselves a little bit more than they should. Uh, come to an event like this and I realize, you know, th- th- this is fun. I mean, I'm beat up. I'm broken. It sucks. Joe's smiling again right. uh, at my pain at my expense. But uh, after this fun, after this pain, I get to go home and apply some of this somewhere. It, 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 it all makes sense. Uh, not while you're doing it. But at the end, when you look in the mirror and you're driving home, whether you feel defeated because you got defeated, um, or wh- however you're feeling, you know, you realize, I mean, you know, th- there's a purpose for this madness, and uh, I-, I see this that I can take home with me. I see that that I can take home with me. Um, that's where my value is. Wh- wh- when I'm dead and gone, I mean, regardless of how much money I make or don't make, it's, 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 it's just nothing. You know, they always talk about that dash in between your birth date and your dead date. Right. You know, that dash, if it's, for me, if it's not filled with impacted lives, changed lives, uh, that have impacted and changed me in the process, then I, I failed. And uh, that's going to be a new tagline for us. What's, the, what's your dash look like? Yeah, yeah. Well, right, I like that. I'm tired of failing. And uh, just remember I came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No problem. Just success. Let's talk about success. How do you define success? The, the, the amount of lives I impact. Right. That's it. Um, I'm more valuable than, than you can ever pay me to be. My value is not 
defined by how much I make because if it isn't, that means there's a maximum, right. you know, right. my value caps at a certain level. Right. Wouldn't that be cool if people measured themselves that way? Like how much impact do you make? I think so. Positive impact sure, for, sure. for other people. That'd be, a, that'd be a cool measure rather than a salary. Right, right. I agree. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, just like I, I think um, we shouldn't have calories, we should have burpees. Right? You would think that. Right? You, would, <laughs> you look at a burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. 222 burgers. No, you, you, yeah. I don't want to eat that. That's a, when you look at things uh, slightly differently. Yeah. And really, uh, what you're pretty much suggesting is, hey, look at it realistically. Look right. at beyond instant gratification. Yep. All right, you got a medal, you cross the finish line, now what? There's about 20,000 other people following you, you're going to do the same thing. They all have the same story to, uh, story to share. What's, your What's different one? between your story right. and theirs? Well, mine is I did the same thing, except I'm hurting really bad because I, I helped somebody who couldn't do it without me. Yeah, right. and, and, and they trusted me. And I'm a f- pretty frail <laughs> you know, individual, so for, the, for, for anyone to trust me, I mean, uh, physically, is, is, is just humbling to me. Sure. You know? um, I've, been, I've been toying with this concept of um, who are you? you know, who, who are you? Who am I? And, and forcing myself and, and maybe others to reflect on that, right? Because um, in these moments and events like this where you get up against the wall and you really can't take another step, it forces you to, to consider those things. What I found, and I even found it this morning, is uh, folks will say really logical things like, oh, no, this isn't for me. This is not my true north. This is not where I was headed. Well, I can't think of anything good in life, I don't know if you agree, that doesn't come with a lot of pain. Well, uh, first thing, I'm a broken individual. I'm like everyone else's story, you know. Uh, regardless of upbringing and the, you know the, the, the headaches and the hassles back then, as an adult, I'm a broken individual. I'm someone who's realized that uh, I can't do life on my own. I can't do it on my own terms, you know. Uh, I believe in a higher power. I believe that God allowed me to be in this particular place and this particular point in time, but not just for me, you right. know. Um, so I'm someone that, that realizes that uh, being broken is a reality, but there's more to that. There's the other side of that brokenness, you know, and there's that, there's that peace and there's that healing, which uh, I'm, I'm constantly fighting for, you know, uh, that'll help get others to that, to that side. Um, and like you mentioned, you can tap out, but then the joy you have when you're looking at that from the other side, when you say, hey, I could have tapped out, you know, I could have given up, you know, I, I could have thrown in the towel, you know, wh- whatever the issue is, maritally or at work or right. a, a, an event, you know, whatever. Right. So. The pain goes on forever. There are times to pivot, right? There are times to quit, but, um, but I think it's rare. Yeah. Well, I think uh, wisdom has to be used, you know, yeah. and in an event you can find a weakness, you can find a limitation, and the right thing to do because of that unique situation, that moment in time, is to tap so that you don't cause yourself any damage or you sure. don't impact anyone else's experience or situation. Uh, but when we go beyond the event and look at the longer event called life, um, there's nothing to tap out about. There's no mat to even tap. It's just you, reality, and looking beyond, you know, beyond the moment to what you can accomplish to get to the other side. Sure. What advice? Let's give some advice to those listeners and viewers out there on, on how to get ahead. Every, we're all broken, yeah. right? We've all got issues. So uh, some of us can't get motivated. Some of us can't get ahead. Some of us are victims. Right. Um, what do you suggest? Remind yourself how valuable you are, first and foremost. You are unique. We are all unique. I mean, you, you bring a particular mindset to this world that at least hasn't been broadcasted until you showed up on the scene doing these things. Everyone out there has a unique perspective, a unique value that the world needs to hear, experience, share, even if that portion of the world is just a neighbor, just a kid next door. Uh, so the first thing is just, just remind yourself how valuable you are. You weren't just created to eat, right. maybe exercise, maybe work for a job, right. uh, for, for a living, make some money, go to bed and repeat, 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 die, and that's it. You know, you're some faded memory. You know, so there, there's, the first thing is just reminding yourself that, hey, man, there's a purpose to all of this. And kind of like a gogi, uh, the, it, you, you're not going to find it. You're not, you, you're not going to find it right away. But through your life, through your process, you're going to be like, hey, you know what? That horrible experience was to prepare me for this experience. That great experience was to move me forward towards other, uh, other experiences. So uh, the first thing is, hey, you're valuable. Uh, number two that I would say uh, as a reminder is get yourself some new friends. If you, the friends around you uh, are not encouraging you, then they need to be away from you. If your family 
Uh, it's a tough pill to swallow, but if your family's not encouraging you, it's time to move on. I'll give them their space, you know? And uh, if I could just define encouraging, um, encouraging you to do the right thing, anything less than that is discouragement. So even if you're encouraging someone to do the wrong thing, that's not encouraging. Sure. That's, that's all negative. That's yeah, discouraging. So uh, get people around you. And then, and then lastly is uh, the distractions that are out there are killing us. Sure. They're, they're, they're causing division between you know spouses, division between children, division between neighbors and neighborhoods, countries, and all these things. And the longer we're on our phones, the longer we're doing these things, uh, e- even the longer I might be helping someone else, that might be distracting me from that higher purpose of taking care of my own so that they can, in turn, uh, do greater things than I did. So sure. those are the three things that I would that immediately jump out. You're the man. Uh, one day, I'm the man in training. <laughs> That's right. Ogogi might get me to be closer to the man, but uh, well, I know you were using this as an excuse to get out of a, you know, 20 minutes of a gogi. So why don't you get back in there? Excuse is gone. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. So incredible that we've got uh, two people in this interview. Uh, there's enough from either of them to do a whole thing on. So it's actually going to be kind of tough to fit in everything that we want to fit in. Um, I was blown away when he talked about the um, the key to his life is compassion and action. And it just really summed up who he is. I met him. He came to one of our summer events in Pittsfield and um, just such a, a giving person, but the idea of compassion and action. And it's all about being out there actually doing something with that. Yeah. And I mean, he's going through the entire race himself too. I mean, it's like the race himself plus, plus, and, and, and. So yep. that's impressive. Well, th- when you talk about his compassion, I think that came through the interview, yeah. you know, it comes off the screen or however you want to say it. Cause what he's talking about, how do you, how do you, what's a measure of a man, a measure of your life kind of stuff? And it's, it's not how much money you've gained or what you've possessed. It's, it's who you've helped. <laughs> no, I'm not Joe. pointing at Joe. Joe. I'm, point, I'm pointing at Joe because of a previous, Joe is agreeing. Previ- exactly. no, previous conversation yeah. we were having about Wall Street kind yeah, of stuff. Sure, sure, yeah, it, sure. it, it, it is, who did you I, help? I have compassion. Like what is, <laughs> yes, you, you do. You, I you, take action. You have, a, you have a lot of compassion. But what, what is your effect on others? Yeah. You know, who, who have you positively impacted? You know? And, you know, you start counting those up, and that's kind of really, it'd be great if we were all measured that way. And when he said about you fill your dash with impacted lives and that success, he told a story that I want to reference because it ties in another story that's pretty similar. You talk about impacting lives and the lives you've impacted through Spartan, and he said that um, uh, when they're coming down the hill defeated, and you turned to him and said, uh, I guess you guys couldn't do it, eh? And he said how that lit the fire in their belly, but he was really angry, and he, like, disliked you. And uh, a very uh, regular listener of ours is Gus Leota, who you've met, and Gus came and did a summer death race with us. Uh, so Joe was on the Spartan Up cruise, and Gus had not finished the beast. And he uh, had gone on the cruise specifically because he wanted to meet Joe to tell Joe he was going to finish this, the Ultra Beast. So he waited when people are there for the book signing, and he waited to be the very last person to let people go so he could have his, his time with Joe. <laughs> and he got up there and he said, Mr. Desain, I'm a big fan. Uh, I didn't finish your beast, but I am going to finish your ultra beast. And Joe said, no, you're not. Signed the book and walked away. <laughs> but but, be, but Gus, be, Gus did uh, finish the ultra yeah, beast yeah, yeah. because of that, right? And yeah, so, so, so the idea tough of love, is that what that is? is absolutely. It seems to work yeah. for a lot of people. So, I, so go, go, I, go oh, ahead. I was, no, I mean, I mean, just that dash point. I mean, I, I, I'm a superstitious person, so I still hold my breath past the cemetery, you know, but that... That's irrelevant, I guess. It is. But, but at the same time, you look at those tombstones and you think, holy moly, like that, that really is just that, that symbolic thing of all of your, what is your legacy, which we've talked about a lot here. Like, what do you want your story to be? All these different things represented in that simple symbol. I just never thought about the that. The dash. It was, it's it all was, about the dash. All, oh, and then, of course, I've been in Miami, so I won't even say like... Kardashians, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> oh my god, so embarrassing. Wait, uh, no, and the, wait, I just want to go back to you. Hold your breath in cemeteries. Yes. Of course, is that a respect for like those that have passed away? It's something that they teach you when you're like five. Like hold your breath past I, cemetery. I, I carry the kettlebell in Japan. Leo I walked through a cemetery. That is, it's like a two and a half mile walk. If I held my breath, I'd be dead. How do you? Well, you, you, you think you can't make it through the cemetery, Joe, huh? <laughs> Two and a half miles? <laughs> There's no way to... In, well, in a car when children, and they hold their breath, and some of the children... Uh, never grow up. Growing up. I'll never grow up. Hey, uh, anyway. speaking of children, there's something I want to mention about uh, the interview with Nelson that, uh, that I don't want to get lost in this, because it was, it was a pretty profound thing he said. Here's a guy who learned to give and found his life was so much more meaningful when he'd be out there giving... But he said the pendulum swung too far, and he was just so about giving to other people that he realized he was really dropping some responsibilities at home. And we see that sometimes where it's really 
sometimes the easy way out to pour yourself completely into other people that you aren't related to because or your job or yeah. your job exactly yeah but the or I, some of this endurance stuff yeah sure where, where people make that the whole focus and the central thing and I love that he said that that he was out there pouring so much into all these other people which he still wants to do but realized that he needed first and foremost to take care of his own responsibilities and that was a really big lesson in this I thought and a really fun and gogi in agreement and with that said yeah absolutely Close it up, Johnny. All right. Uh, I agree that you should all be listening to this on iTunes. Watch the odd one on YouTube because we're pretty spectacular looking. <laughs> Way no, to go. Watch. We were <laughs> 10 years ago when we started That's this. Right. And, uh, but also, <laughs> um, really to, to see all the interviews with tons of great people, go to spartan.com slash podcast. Count your burpees, not your calories. Blessings. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.